Hi, in this video we're going to see how we create a custom component. While it's always better to try and clone a, an existing component and reusing it, sometimes it's necessary to go for a custom component. In this scenario we're going to create a component that reads from social feeds or social media the social feed. Let's see how to do that. So first things first, I'm going to open my environment. And as we've seen before, I'll go to system, settings, features. I'll just add a new folder here, social media components. And within that folder, I'll create the new module. So this is the social feed. <coughs> and it should be in social media components. Once this is created, I have two options now, either to start writing everything from scratch or Again, I can clone something and completely change the content of it. Now, it is recommended to clone just so that you don't forget any of the components you need because you're going to have to add branches with their available renderings uh, and their rendering variant. You're going to have to add your rendering, uh, uh, your controller rendering. You're going to have to add your data templates and all that. So it's, again, much easier to just go to the promo and clone that first. So let's go to the promo. clone rendering and I'll call that social feed. Now in this scenario, I want to ensure that everything is copied. Nothing is actually uh, inherited. And I'm just going to tell you why now social feed. I'll call this social feed. Since we're really not relying 100% on these actual rendering parameters and these data sources, we're just using them as a stub for our actual implementation, you really want to make a copy because you're going to change a lot in what's there. So as you can see, I've created social feed and it's now within the media social media components and uh, the rendering CSS class is social feed. I've copied the parameters, I've copied the data source and now we can just create or copy a view. So I'll just copy MVC view and I'll go and add mine. So now I'll just keep keep it like that social feed within the social components folder. So paste this and I'll replace the other one as well. Now sorry, select existing since I did it myself. Now what this will do, as we've seen in previous videos, is it's going to create a full-blown component and it's going to be cloned from the Pro. What I need to do now is actually go to this newly created component. So I'll go to Features, Social Media Component. That's within, of course, the templates first. And I'll start cleaning this up a bit. So I want the Social Feeds folder because I want to be able to configure my Social Feeds within that folder in the data. But the social feed, I probably don't want promo. I don't want all that data. So I'll just, first thing, I'm going to remove everything that's there. And then I'll add my own stuff. So I'll have something called social media configuration. Now, here what I want to do is I want to actually add all the different tags and access tokens and so on so that a user can just go in when creating the social media feed can just add his access token and then it's automatically going to be retrieved. Now I have these created somewhere else, so I'm just going to 
copy and paste them so I have access tokens. So let me just use this is my side core SXA 1.7 version, and this is my 1.8. Okay, I'll just pause till I copy them all and then I'll continue. Okay, so I've copied them all. So I have now the Twitter authentication, Instagram access token, Facebook access token, and so on in this. So I'll just save it. And I'll go to the rendering parameters. Now, what I want to do here is I actually want to add some rendering parameters that enable me to configure which of the social media should be visible. So I'll just call this configuration data and then I'll just do a all tab visible. That's going to be a checkbox. And then Facebook tab visible. Another checkbox. Okay, and so on. So let me just continue. So I've defined here the configuration data for my rendering variant. So as I'm dragging and dropping or creating and adding a new component from this, I'll be able to choose which tabs do I want to be visible. Okay. Now that we've completed this and we've configured the rendering parameters, we've configured the social feed as a template, the next step is we're gonna actually go to the branches and we should see the social media feed here. As you can see, it's added to the available social feed renderings and this is the default rendering, which looks like a promo. We're gonna, of course, change that later on. Now, let's go to the rendering itself because we're going to do some updates there as well. So we go here, then we go to, I'll just refresh so that my social media is there, social feed, and this I don't want because it's not going to actually use the default rendering variant controller or the variance controller. It's actually going to create a new one or we're going to create a new one now that we're going to use for here. So the next step is, of course, to open Visual Studio so that I can start working on that. So I've created my Visual Studio project ultimately, and I usually just add these folders by default. So I have my app config controllers, models, pipeline, repositories, and views. These are just the default. I always make sure to add. Within the app config, what I'm gonna add is a folder called feature and then a folder called include, and then a config file, which is register social feed config. Within that config file, all I need to do is start adding my pipeline registration. So I'll just use my assembly name. I'm just cheating from a previous one. And I'll use my type, my correct type. So it's social components.pipeline.irc. Of course, this is not created yet, or I've actually copied it. So we're going to update that as well. But now what this does is it tells the application configuration that it should include this pipeline or this register pipeline within when it's loading. The next step is let's add that pipeline. So I'm going to go to my pipeline in version of control or IOC, and then I'll create a class called register social feed services. And what this does is it inherits from iService configurator and adds the actual social feed item repository and social feed list repository as the i social feed item repository and the i social feed 
list to Puzapu. <coughs> this is pretty simple and I usually recommend just have a project ready that you can just copy and paste from. The next step of course is to actually add my repositories that have been added here. So I have here as you can see my iSocial feed item, iSocial feed list and the actual implementation for each one of them. So this is just inherit from the iVariant repository and this will inherit from the iVariant i model and i controller and i abstract repository. The social feed itself will inherit from variant repository and the i social feed item repository we just created and the social feed list will inherit from the list repository the i social feed list i model i controller i abstract. But before we go into the details for each one Let's start off by looking at what's written in each one. So this, as you can see, as an interface, I don't add anything to it, nor does this. But as soon as I go to the social feed item, I'll add the public constructor or the default constructor, and then I'll override the get model. Within that, I'll just instantiate my social feed item model and fill the base properties or call the fill base properties from the variant repository and return the model. The social feed list repository is actually where my implementation is because I'm now talking about creating a list. So the social media that's coming in, I want to show all the social media. So this is going to be a list. So what I've done here is I've created the set of public properties that ultimately retrieve my social feeds, whether they're Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and so on. And within get model, what I've done is First thing, I've instantiated my social feed list model, which is my model that we haven't really talked about yet. And then I started setting the value of all the different items. So I'm setting the value of the Twitter authentication, the Twitter screen name, Instagram access token, uh, and so on and so forth. So all the data that I've added from my data source, I'm using here to fill. I've used, I've created a generic method called get field value which actually takes the field name and then checks if the rendering it just does the null checks and then gets from the rendering data source item fields that field name dot value so this is just a function so that i don't i have to do the null checks for each one on its own i just use the generic function i've done here after i've filled in all the model values what i do is i can fill the base properties and of course return my model now if you look at my model it's quite basic it just has all the different components we've talked about here and the item model just has the stuff that i need to actually show per social feed so i have text screen name created at url type and redirect url let's go to the controller so my controller I've inherited from the page nibble controller and within that I've just added two properties, one for the social feed item and one for the social feed list repositories and I've created an actual constructor for this class that takes in the repository and just sets it as the social feed list repository and I've overridden the get model which I've set instantiated ultimately the social feed list repository and invoke the get model from that repository. Let's go back to that social feed list repository here. And as you can see, after I get all these items, you're going to see a lot of them where I'm saying, or the, these ones at the bottom where I'm saying this dot social feed list item dot to list and so on, which is ultimately these properties here. So if I look at the Twitter feed list item, what it's doing is it's going into Twitter. So it's invoking a web request to create the actual api.twitter or invoke the api.twitter.com with the screen name that I've set or I've defined and with account so that I don't just retrieve a lot of them and whether to exclude, exclude replies or not. Once this comes back, so of course I've added the method as get and I've added the header authorization and then I'll try to invoke. Once I've invoked it, I'll do I'll use the JavaScript serializer 
to parse or deserialize the JSON object that's coming and I just for each through it to get the text user created at all the data that I have in my social feed item. So now that this data is here, what I need to do next is actually view it. So I need to create the view that actually represents this. So I have the feature social feeds view. And what I've done here is I've created helper function. So I have, I've created a function called render feed, which ultimately takes the model item and then checks its type. So whether it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or LinkedIn, and then just creates the HTML for it. Now, another option for this is you can actually delegate this whole helper function to become a rendering variant and then keep the rendering variant checking for which model item. And so ultimately to give more flexibility for the user to have different views for that. And of course, at the bottom here, what I'm doing is I'm checking is the current rendering parameter of each of these tabs or visible tabs rendering is it true or false? If it's true, then I'll hide, uh, sorry, if it's false, then I'll hide this particular component or this particular tab ultimately from the social feed. So there you have it. This is a quick go glance on how we create the actual code for that. Now I'll build this code and I'll copy the view or I'll publish this to my Psycor environment. And in the back end, I'll go back to my back end environment here. And within the content editor, the first thing I'll change this one. So I'll go to my actual registration. I'm just copying and pasting right now, but I know I do have some mistakes here. So first things first, I'll just remove that. And then the social components it shouldn't really be the pipeline because I'm not getting the pipeline. I need to get the controller. So it's controller, social feeds controller. So it's controllers. Social feed controller within the social components DLL. Again, I'll just go through everything I've configured. So the parameters template is the social feed, the open properties after add is just default, the editable is default. And here the query should be within the social feed folder, whether it's from the shared site or from the normal site. And of course the source template is the social feed. And finally, I'm checking the rendering CSS class and the rendering view that I've just created. I'll save that. And I'm now ready to actually install this social feed component. There you have it. This is how we create a custom component with a custom controller. And as you've seen, it's very simpler, similar to cloning. The only thing I've actually changed here is the controller. And most of the work is done in the back end just to manage that controller.